Hello students, welcome to lecture 19 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture will be on an overview and modeling of periodic dielectric waveguides. So here is the lecture outline, we will briefly introduce and provide overview of the topic. We will show a two dimensional model of this and then we will also consider periodic dielectric waveguides in 3D and we will see how we do modeling in COMSOL uh, for this periodic dielectric waveguide and that gives us the results which are reported in the literature. So, as we saw in the previous lecture that about the analysis of 3D uh, photonic crystals that 3D photonic crystals are those which are able to you know uh, confine light in all three dimensions. Now, these materials can localize either at a single point that is like an optical cavity or it can direct light along a specific path that will work as a waveguide or it can confine into a two dimensional surface. So, all these three types of uh, defects, this will be called as point defect, this will be a line defect and this is a surface defect. All these possibilities are there in a 3D photonic crystal. Now, what are the fabrication challenges? As we have seen that it is not very simple to fabricate those 3D photonic crystals, right? The fabrication looks very challenging and if you compare this with the 2D photonic crystals, you will see that the 2D photonic crystals are much more, you know, easier to adapt, okay, to the current technological advances and it is easy to fabricate. So, a lot of people actually try to uh, restrict their applications to 2D photonic crystals, okay. So, we will try to you know shift this discussion to simpler structures such as uh, periodic dielectric waveguides and we will see how they are useful, right. So, when you talk about periodic uh, dielectric waveguides, what are their characteristics? So, these are basically one dimensional periodic pattern or grating which is along the direction of propagation and this waveguide possesses finite thickness and width. So, these are some examples of uh, periodic dielectric waveguide which basically has uh, one dimensional you know periodicity here it is along x direction and basically you have index guiding along the other two directions that is y and z. Okay. So, regardless of the geometry, these three different you know periodic waveguides, they have something in common. It is that there is a photonic band gap along their propagation direction that is along x direction and in the other two directions, they are able to you know confine light through index guiding. So, these are the similarities in this kind of periodic waveguide structure. Okay. Now, in the next two lectures, we will explore different forms of hybrid system that will be able to combine the periodicity with uh, other mechanism to confine light in three dimensions. We will also um, discuss about you know the periodic planar waveguides which are known as photonic crystal slabs. So, which uh, utilize two dimensional periodicity along with vertical uh, index guiding. We will also examine um, photonic crystal fibers, these are basically special types of waveguides where the periodicity is basically transfers to the direction of propagation. Okay. So, we are starting with a simple model that is a two dimensional model. Although the real uh, motivation for this lecture is to confine light in three dimensions, we will begin our discussion with a very simple uh, two dimensional model that will be able to showcase the essential physics that is involved. Okay. We will combine index guiding in one direction with the photonic band gap in other direction. Right. So, let us first think of a strip that is a material strip that extends in x direction and it confines light in y direction through index guiding right and uh, the and it remains uniform 
along the z direction which is basically out of this screen okay or into the screen whichever way you want to imagine now if you consider the light propagation as seen in lecture 13 we will focus on light that propagates in the xy plane that means you can actually take kz equals 0 okay and specifically restrict our discussion or analysis to only tm polarization that means you can only calculate the ez uh, component or z component of the electric field right so this is the uniform strip now you can also try to introduce some kind of periodic interruption in this strip so you can actually think of adding periodic in, uh, interruption along the x direction which will create a pattern like this kind of dielectric squares so uh, we can think of a periodic waveguide which is having a period of a and each uh, dielectric square can be thought of having dimension of 0.4 a by 0.4 a and the material that is involved here has a dielectric constant of 12. So, with that we can start our discussion with a two dimensional period oh sorry a uh, periodic waveguide right. So, it is having the periodicity only along one direction okay along y and z it is uniform. So, how about the translational symmetry you can see that the uniform strip exhibits continuous translational symmetry that is along the x direction and the line of squares okay which is having discrete translational symmetry and that also along the x direction we have discussed about continuous and uh, discrete translational symmetry in our previous lectures so neither structure possesses translational symmetry in the y direction isn't it so how do you talk about you know the conservation and simplification of wave numbers so here as the periodicity is along x you can say kx is conserved due to the symmetry in the x direction ky is not conserved reason is it reflects the lack of symmetry along y direction okay and when you want to do the analysis of the band structure okay you can see that uh, as discussed in lecture 13 it is beneficial to compute the projected band structure that is omega n as a function of k so it is basically the omega k relationship that is the dispersion relation okay so in this band structure you can see the mode frequencies are plotted as a function of k although they technically depend on the full wave vector k for modes which are far from the waveguide. So, here on the right you can see the uniform strip band diagram. So, if you consider this as the uniform strip which you have seen before. So, this is the band diagram for this particular uniform strip waveguide okay? and this is computed for TM polarized okay in plane light way only so when you say tm polarized in plane light you can say kz equals 0 so this is basically only kx component okay again these are normalized frequencies so it is omega a by 2 pi c and this is normalized wave vector so it is k a by 2 pi right so this is the band diagram and what you can see here that the diagram actually displays the range of k starting from 0 to 2 pi by a okay although k is technically unrestricted due to this uh, you know continuous translational symmetry okay but you actually plot it from 0 to 2 pi by a so what is the definition of the light cone we have discussed earlier that you know the region which lies above the light line that is omega equals ck so anything above this that is giving you the light cone so the lower boundary of the light cone gives you the light line okay and in this region there are extended uh, states that could propagate in air okay so this blue shaded region actually tells you about the light cone and what they contain they basically contain extended states which are allowed to propagate in air now what are these two lines these are basically discrete 
guided bands that are leveled as even band and odd band and there is a band numbering that you can see okay and even and odd are basically uh, decided based on y equals zero mirror symmetry plane so if you take a horizontal plane that bisects this particular strip okay that is basically y equals zero plane and depending on the field profile whether it is symmetrical across the this mirror symmetry plane the odd and even modes are basically decided so that is what happens you know beneath the light cone so the higher index of the waveguide beneath the light cone pulls down this uh, discrete guided modes and these modes are localized due to total internal reflection so how does you know the symmetry of the waveguide help so if you look into this waveguide this waveguide has a symmetry plane at y equals 0 that basically bisects the waveguide you can think of a horizontal plane as i told you so why you are using that that can be used for class classification of the guided modes so all guided modes can be classified as either even or odd with respect to the mirror reflections in this y equals 0 plane and symmetries that might seem present in other planes perpendicular to the waveguide axis are actually broken when k is not equal to 0 right so you are mainly focused about this uh, symmetry ac ac across the mirror reflection plane now as i mentioned that this diagram shows one even band and one odd band so the even band basically contains the lowest energy so that corresponds to the fundamental mode okay and then odd band will have some higher order uh, thing higher order modes now when you move from the continuous strip to this uh, discontiguous strip that is means you know this uh, discretized strip okay what are the challenges first thing is that it may seem difficult to use uh, total internal reflection to guide light uh, along x okay within this uh, broken piece of strip okay so why that happens because you know light rays cannot remain within the individual square or you know nor maintain an angle that is smaller than the critical angle so this this discretization actually poses a great challenge so that is why you know when you design standard waveguides the principle suggests that you should avoid junctions because whenever there is a junction between two different waveguides that will give rise to radiative losses or radiative scattering losses and here it is like full of you know small small scatterers so that way this make this ideally should make a very very bad waveguide but is that the case is it that you know this kind of infinite sequence of these junctions which is repeating periodically okay is further worsening your scattering loss or there is some magic involved so the thing is you need to analyze this periodic uh, medium using you know block theorem so the initial pessimism that we had regarding the effectiveness of this particular discontinuous strip okay may be misguided because this concerns overlook the block theorem okay and the block theorem indicates that you know a periodic structure does not necessarily scatter waves okay so despite all these structural discontinuities the periodicity of the system ensures the conservation of the wave vector k that means there exists a light cone beneath which the, you will have you know the localized bands which can form and they can support truly guided modes which will propagate indefinitely along that waveguide okay so this is the beauty of the block theorem that describes the propagation of guided modes in a uh, discontiguous medium or periodic medium okay so here as we mentioned that this is the 
strip waveguide for which the band structure has been calculated or the band diagram is calculated and it is shown here same y axis normalized frequency a by lambda naught or you can write it as 2 pi by for omega a by 2 pi c and the x axis is nothing but your normalized wave factor that is k a by 2 pi what you see here you see that you know light cone is basically this is basically symmetry okay and this part the right part is basically folded okay so along this line you can see a symmetry okay so what happens here you can see there is an even band 1 you have even band 2 and then you get odd band 1 so from the you now peak of this even band 1 to the bottom of the even band 2 you can actually see a band gap We'll come into that details okay so what is important here to notice that the first brillouin zone okay for this uh, discontiguous strip okay so first thing is that this strip this fragmented strip features a finite brillouin zone okay which is not seen in that uniform strip waveguide so whenever it has got a brillouin zone it leads to a unique behavior right so you can think of a range something like pi by a to 2 pi by a the wave vector anything in between is nothing but equivalent to minus pi by a to 0 okay or you can actually think of this as a reverse of the irreducible brilliant zone which lies from 0 to pi by a so you can think of a mirror symmetry at the half point which is at pi by a okay this one 0 0.5 so when k a by 2 pi is equal 0 0.5 that is the midpoint okay so that is why you know you will see that this is uh, repeating or you can say it's a mirror image right so a light cone exists within each of these zones so you can see in this zone a light cone is there in this zone also light cone is there and the tip of the original light cone which is located at k equals 0 in the strip okay will also repeat periodically um, when k becomes you know 2 pi by a so when k becomes 2 pi by a k a by 2 pi will become 1 so it will repeat here again it will repeat when this will become 2 and so on okay so you can only study this part and you can talk about the band features you can actually only take half of this and then you can understand what is going on in this particular discontinuous periodic waveguide so you can also observe that the lowest band starts at zero frequency right at k equals zero and it flattens at this point which is basically k equals pi by a okay or you can say k by 2 pi equals 0 0.5 and then it starts bending downwards and returns to zero frequency again at k equals 2 pi by a or you can say k by 2 pi equals 1 so this band actually this bending actually causing a band gap to open between the two first first two guided uh, modes which are both even bands okay one and two okay and this is something that you have seen already in one dimensional crystals that you have discussed earlier okay so now let let us understand what is the nature of this band gap the band gap is com considered incomplete here because it excludes only the guided modes okay it means whatever is happening here are like they, they are basically radiating modes because those are within the you know uh, light cone but those can still exist okay for any frequency omega and uh, they are not affected by this gap so you can see that the light uh, cone exists for all the frequencies and that is why this kind of band gap is basically a incomplete band gap if you try to remember or recollect the complete band gap we have seen that was there for all the values of k so it was going from this you know 
left to right boundary okay but here it is not like that so now let us evaluate the field profiles of the guided modes and uh, they are being plotted here so this is the same band diagram we have seen in the last slide and this is the you know, field profile which actually plots the magnitude of ez which is the z component of the electric field okay red showing the positive and blue the negative part and you can see the dielectric uh, square is basically marked here okay so this is how the even band one looks like okay so why they are called even so you can actually take y equals zero plane which is going through the middle of this you know uh, band okay let me try to draw it so it is like this and you can see on the top part and the bottom part top part and bottom part it is basically symmetrical so it is called a even band same this one you can draw the same kind of uh, plane over here okay and you will see it is also the top and bottom has got symmetrical however in this case it is not symmetrical okay and that is why it is called a odd band right so the lower band has basically peaked within the dielectric as you can see here and if you go for the next higher band that is even band number two it has got a white line in between the dielectric that tells you that there is a node means zero uh, electric field point okay in the middle of the dielectric okay and for the odd symmetry you can also see that the odd band basically contains a nodal line along the x-axis within the dielectric okay and because of this it is having further higher energy as compared to your even band number two and this mode is less tightly confined to the waveguide as compared to the even uh, modes the reason being that it is also closer to the light cone okay and you can also see that the mode extends more into air and it is less into the dielectric so what i mean to emphasis here is that the electric field distribution or the field profiles of the mode actually gives you the understanding of why their energies are low and how the field is localized inside this particular dielectric strip waveguide now one might wonder why there is no second odd band okay that is something like having two nodal lines in each block the answer is that that the frequency of such a state would be high enough to get pushed into the light cone so if you see here this one is already very close to the light cone and when you think of two nodal lines that is the odd band number two that would be already in the light cone okay so it is not basically a guided mode okay so the periodic dielectric waveguides have only a finite number of guided bands whereas if you compare this with the uniform dielectric waveguide they can have infinite number of guided bands so this is one important uh, uh, difference between um, the uniform waveguides and uh, this uh, periodic dielectric waveguides now the periodic replication of light cone in the case of uh, dielectric periodic dielectric waveguide also enforces an upper frequency cutoff for the guided mode which is basically omega equals uh, c pi by a so you can see that no band can actually have higher frequency than this right so that way it is also putting a higher cutoff so does that have any implication at short wavelength the answer is yes at short wavelength where you know you can apply um, ray optics the intuitive the intuitive understanding gets confirmed that means you know the total internal reflection 
cannot effectively guide light along a periodic medium in the ray optics limit and that is what happens here as well. Now, let us focus on periodic dielectric waveguides in three dimension. So, the previous study was all about uh, dielectric waveguides using a simplified two dimensional model. Now, let us move on to a more realistic one which is a three dimensional model for the periodic dielectric waveguides. So, the principles that we have understood so far from the periodic dielectric waveguides can be straightforwardly applied to this kind of three dimensional structure. So, here we have taken example of a periodic dielectric waveguide which basically has uh, one dimensional periodicity of air holes drilled into a dielectric medium okay, along the x direction. That means, there is index guiding in the other two transverse direction along y and z. So, this one is particularly easy to fabricate and that is why it is a popular choice for examples being discussed because this dielectric strip has a series of cylindrical air holes punched through. Okay? So, it looks pretty uh, simple to fabricate this kind of structure. So, the holes are considered to be spaced or separated by A. Okay? So, so, you can consider center to center to be A and they have a radius of 0 0.25 A. The strip is considered to have a dielectric constant epsilon equals 12. Okay? And you consider the width of the strip to be A and its thickness to be 0 0.4 A. Okay. So, currently the waveguide is imagined to be suspended in air. Okay. So, for the analysis purpose. So, when you calculate the band diagram for this particular waveguide, okay, this is what you will obtain. You will see that um, this particular line which has a slope of 1 okay, marks the light line because there is a normalized frequency and normalized wave factor. So, anything above the light line is having the light cone. Okay? So, this is the dispersion relation or band diagram for this slab hole waveguide. Okay? And here as you can see only the irreducible brilliant zone is uh, shown. So, we are not showing the you know, uh, extended version of the brilliant zone where this would have been you know mirror imaged okay so we are only showing the irreducible brilliant zone and what you can see here that you know a different type of uh, leveling is used for um, the bands so we will come into those and different colors are also used however light uh, cone is basically shaded in darker blue and it is bounded by this black light line. Right. So, what is important here? The question is, is there any conserved wave vector? Yes, there is a conserved wave vector k that is along the direction of uh, periodicity. So, you can actually take kx here. Okay. How about the light cone? As we discussed, that this diagram includes the light cone which marks the area for frequency greater than or equal to ck okay? that represents the extended states in air and below this light line uh, are the discrete guided bands. Now, you can see that there are many guided bands and things are complex in this case. So, the guided bands are more numerous and complex as you compare with the previous example which was a simple two dimensional model. Now, this increased complexity comes from the inclusion of all modes okay? because in the previous case we only considered for TM polarization. Okay? Now, how about the mirror symmetry plane? Okay? So, the three dimensional waveguide actually features two mirror symmetry plane, is not it? So, you can actually have uh, one plane z equals 0 that will be lying in the x y uh, plane. Okay? So, you can call it a z equal 0 plane which is uh, perpendicular to the whole axis 
okay and uh, there can be y equals 0 plane which is basically parallel to the whole axis so you can think of the cylinder being drilled inside so the axis of the cylinder is lying along z okay so y equals 0 is basically xz plane and that tells you that you are basically parallel to the whole axis so there are two mirror symmetry plane and based on those you can classify the modes so all the modes can be classified as either even or odd with respect to the reflections in the z and y planes so let's look into the example so the z even modes are referred to as e modes because they are mostly like te modes and z odd modes are leveled as m because they are more like tm modes so that is why you see e and m being used here okay so these e and m are basically depending on the z equals zero plane uh, symmetry okay uh, if it is even you use e if it is odd you use m now how about the subscript you see o and e written in different places so here even and odd indicate the mode symmetry under y reflection which we have also seen earlier so based on that you can identify whether the mode is even or odd okay based on y reflection the first one e and m are decided based on z reflection and small e and small o that is e even and odd are decided based on y reflection now what is th what is this number one two three something like that these are basically additional subscript which identify the band number okay so here now you can see it is e o one so in z reflection it is even in y reflection it is odd but it is the lowest uh, energy band and it is band number one and then you have this m e one then you have e o two and so on okay so for the events you number them as one two um, and so on okay for the odd then for even e even you again start from one two three and so on so each type will have its own you know uh, band numbers one two three i know so the second band of modes that are z even so z even means it will have capital e it is y odd so it will be o and it is second band so it will be numbered as two so this is how you can read this particular diagram now our job here will be to identify the band gap in this particular band diagram so when considering um, each symmetry type individually such as let us try to only focus on e capital e o and n bands okay so you can see that between these two bands you are actually able to see the band gap being present and this is something very similar to the previous example right and the largest band gap here occurs between these two bands and uh, if you measure them you can see that they are almost 21 percent gap to mid gap ratio okay so that's pretty large band gap okay so now let us further analyze the modes by studying their electric field distribution so that will help us you know towards the localization of the modes so this is again you are plotting the z component of the magnetic field so red denotes positive blue denotes negative so this is what you have okay you have e o one mode which looks like this so what are these circles that you see here these are basically those air holes right so you can see that the first band is mostly you know localized within the dielectric holes okay and uh, the second band is mostly within the gap between the two holes 
okay. So, this is something um, you know interesting to see the difference between the two modes, right. So, here you can actually see that the strongest field is within the air holes, here it is in the dielectric, fine. Now, this was the schematic structure and this is the one that is uh, reported in the literature and based on the console modeling okay, that we already discussed in few lectures back. Okay. The TA in this course he has reproduced this particular band diagram and you can see that you are actually able to uh, reproduce the band features more or less similar to uh, the one reported in the literature, right. So, be depend the accuracy of these two depends on a uh, couple of factors like the amount of meshing and all those things, but more or less you can see that uh, the, the information is kind of reproducible, right. So, this is done using this commercially available software console, you can use other softwares also, okay, to solve for this one. And uh, what we have simulated, we basically simulated this structure, okay, where we took a rough guess on A, but then, you know, this is basically normalized to A, so it should not matter. So, here the blue zone actually is the one that is showing the light cone, okay, and that looks, uh, that, that shows us the radiating or the extended modes in air and these are those discrete guided bands, okay. So, this is for this particular structure. You can also do the mode analysis where you can see that the, you know, the first band is mostly concentrated in, um, you know, in the dielectric, okay, whereas uh, you will see that the second band. So, what, what is the difference here as you can see that this corresponds to the same wave factor that is k equals 0 0.8 pi by a. So, you can find out what is what will be your k by 2 pi. So, k by 2 pi will be 0 0.4 somewhere here ok and you are talking about normalized frequency of 0 0.45. So, you are somewhere here. So, that is basically a air mode, ok. So, this mode is basically in air, ok. So, this is how the mode will look like because the strong fields are mostly in the air, ok. But if you consider the same wave factor, ok. So, you are here 0 0.4 and the normalized frequency is 0 0.12. So, you are somewhere on this. Okay. So, this is basically a guided mode and uh, this is how the electric field distribution will look like. Okay. So, what we understand from here the model analysis that the modes correspond to the region which lies above the light cone are basically radiating in nature and that is why the fields are mostly concentrated outside the dielectric structure. Whereas, for the modes which are basically guided modes in this dielectric structure, they fall below the light cone, you will see that the fields are mostly concentrated, you know, uh, within the structure itself. So, this is also another uh, modeling of the dielectric slab waveguide and you can see that uh, simulation can also reproduce. So, I am showing this that to to give you the confidence that uh, you can achieve exactly same results from uh, your own simulation model also okay so that is why i am showing this that here you can also find out what is the light cone which are the guided mode what will be the band gap and all this information so you can simulate and try and reproduce this results which are mentioned in the literature right so, here again you can do the same kind of you know analysis, model analysis of the band diagram. You can look for a particular um, k value or the wave vector value and the normalized frequency value, ok. So, if you consider again um, this kind of k equals 0 0.04 pi by a, ok. 
So, it is very close to this one ok and normal edge frequency of 0 0.12. So, you are basically uh, looking for radiating modes ok. So, you can actually see that from the diagram itself the field diagram itself and if you want to locate something in the guided modes you have to choose that value k and the normal edge frequency and plot this diagram again you will be able to see the field localization in the case of guided modes. So, with that we come to an end to this lecture and uh, if you have any queries regarding this you can always drop an email to me mentioning uh, MOOC and Photonic Crystal on the subject line. Thank you. Thank you.